Ladies and gentlemen, we take you now behind the scenes of a police headquarters in a great American city, where under the cold, glaring lights will pass before us the innocent, the vagrant, the thief, the murderer. This is The Lineup. Sit right here, Charlie. Yes, Lieutenant. Uh, Lieutenant, I don't... It's all right. It's all right. They won't be able to see you. If you identify one of them, they won't know who you are. Yes, Lieutenant. Now, just take your time and make sure. We've got to have these men, Charlie. Uh-huh. May yeah. I have your attention, please? Have a cigarette. Oh, thanks. You people out there on the other side of the wire in the audience room, may I have your attention, please? Thank you. My name is Greb, Sergeant Matt Greb. I'll explain the lineup to you. Each of the suspects you will see will be numbered. I'll call off a number, their name, and charge. If you have any questions or identifications, please remember the number assigned to the prisoner as I call his name. At the end of each line, when I ask for questions or identifications, call out the number. If you're sure or not too sure of the suspect, have him held. The officers who took your name will assist you. They're seated among you. Please be prompt with your questions or identifications. When the prisoners leave here, they are sent to the bathroom and dressed back into their jail clothes. It makes it quite difficult to bring them back after they leave here. The questions I ask these suspects are merely to get a natural tone of voice. So do not pay too much attention to their answers as they often lie. Bring on the line. All right, all right, move up to the end of the stage. That's right, keep it moving, keep it moving. All right, now turn and face front. Hands to your sides, look straight ahead. Number one, Alex Polk, breaking and entering. Where do you live, Alex? 718 East 108th. On the night of November 16th, you broke into the house of R.R. Forster, 2243 South Rockford Street. I didn't take nothing, nothing. Well, you don't have to in this state, Alex. Just breaking in is enough. Yeah? What do you know, as long as I, as long as I didn't get nothing, I should have rang the doorbell, I guess. Number two, Peter Machinsky, narcotic suspect. Where do you live, Peter? Fairmont Hotel, Madison Avenue. That's a pretty nice hotel, Peter. Yeah. Services for good. How about a challenge? Where do you work, Peter? Uh, I am working right now, Sergeant. Uh, stand still. I'm sorry, I'm nervous. You got a monkey on your back? No, 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 Sergeant. I put the junk on a long time ago. It's a year anyway. Number three, Nicholas Garcia, disorderly conduct. What's your business, Nicholas? I work for the city. This is your first offense, Nick? Yes, Sergeant. You were pretty drunk. My wife left me, ran off with a guy. He wasn't a policeman, was he? No. You used some pretty rough, uh, rough language on Patrolman Duff. I don't remember, I'm sorry. Well, watch your language the next time. Some of the boys are sensitive. Yes, Sergeant. Number four, Oscar Cook, narcotic suspect. Where do you live, Oscar? How about that one, Charlie? You have no, quite a any one of them. Well, it's a frame. The pig slipped it on me when he picked me up. This is your third offense. It's going to be pretty rough. I wasn't hauling see. The coolest. The pig stashed it on me. Look who's calling who a pig. Number five, Ernest Schaefer. Narcotic suspect. Where do you live, Ernest? 76 East, 103rd Street. Where do you work? How about it? I don't uh, work, son. Not that one either. And how long have you been putting it down, Ernest? Huh? What are you dreaming about? Beats me. It's pretty crazy, though. <laughs> Ben. This is Charlie, Matt. Hello, Charlie. Hi, Sergeant. I'm sorry you couldn't identify any of those men. Yeah, so am I. Now take him down and show him the mug file. Maybe you can find one of them there. Yeah, sure, sure. I'm right. going up to narcotics. I'll be in Captain Walter's office. Okay. Come on, let's go, Charlie. Uh, uh, see you later, Lieutenant. Yeah. 82, 671 South Lincoln. Attention, all units. All units in the vicinity of 45th Avenue and 108th Street. A 211 and a shooting. Code 3. Attention all units. In... Hello, Ben. Hello, Bill. Relax. 
Yeah. The old boy identify any of them? No, but we'll keep trying. And I'll have the boys keep hauling them in. Charlie can look at every narcotic suspect we've got a package on. Some we haven't. It's a rotten mess. Yeah, rotten. Are you sure this old bum can identify the three men? Uh, Charlie says he can. I don't know. He was flopped under the bridge, says he heard the car pull up and stop. Got scared. Couldn't figure who'd be stopping that late at night. And he saw these guys kill Fisher? No, 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 no. He didn't see them kill him. He heard the shot and looked up. Saw the three men lift Fisher op- over the railing and drop him in the river bend. And he could recognize three men standing up on a bridge late at night? He says so. A couple of lights on the bridge, only 20 feet to the river bend. He says so. I hope he can. I went over and saw Fisher's family myself. Yeah. I've had dinner over there. Mom's a great cook. She took it pretty hard. So did his wife, Jean. Fisher was a good cop. Boys in the precinct are taking it pretty hard, too. We'll get the guys. Fisher was going to make the contact at 8 tonight. Yeah, you're supposed to meet a man named Black. Francis Black. My department's been trying to bust this ring for a long time. Fisher was close. This Black was a pusher for the stuff. Fisher got his confidence and made a deal to buy 10000 in heroin. He was supposed to meet Black last night at 8 o'clock in the bar, and then Black was supposed to take him to the big boy. We had a stakeout in the bar and across the street. Fisher met Black, all right. They got into Black's car and drove to the river where they took the ferry. We staked out a car on the other side. And they switched cars on the ferry. Yeah. So we didn't catch on until Black's car didn't drive off. Had it all set up. Must have known Fisher was a cop before Black met him in the bar. Yeah. Now, what about Black? He got his apartment staked out, but he won't show. Ben. Come on in, man. Hello, Captain. Hi. You want to go over there now, Ben? Yeah, I guess so. I've got Charlie looking at the mugs with Sergeant Quine. Okay. Well, we'll see you later, Bill. He thought we'd take a few minutes and go over and see the Fisher's family. It won't make you feel good. Yeah, Mom Fisher's fed the whole department at one time or another. She's a fine person. I'd feel a lot worse if I didn't stop by. Hello, Ben. Hello, Matt. Hi. Come in. Thanks. Where's Mom? In the kitchen. Fixing young Jeffy's dinner. Be back from school soon. He's in school? He'd already gone before Bill. Came over and told him. Jane. I'm all right. It won't be bad for a while. Till I get lonesome. Till I miss him. I'm just kind of numb now. Mom's in the kitchen. Little Jeff doesn't know? Uh-uh. He was already in school when we heard. I'll tell him tonight. After his dinner. After he watches television. Mom? Oh, huh? Mom. Oh, Mom. Hello, boys. Matthew, Benjamin. I'm fixing Jeff something for his dinner. Some cookies, too, for later. Oatmeal cookies. He likes them. Would my two big policemen like some cookies? Well, we can't stay long, Mom. I shouldn't have to entertain you in the kitchen. But the little ruffian has got an appetite like you, Matthew. <laughs> Nobody's got an appetite like Matt, Mama. It's your cooking, Mom. Yeah, I'm a good cook. The men in my family are particular. Jeff's now eight, and he's very particular. Jean is a fine cook, too, I I guess we spoil our men, don't we, Jean? Oh, Mama. Jean, look in the oven and see if my cookies are done. Yes, Mama. They look done. Mom. Oh, you have to be going, Benjamin. Jean, you take the cookies out of the oven, and I'll go with my two big policemen to the door. Yes, Mama. Bye, Jean. Bye. Bye. Please come back. Soon. Sure, sure. Jean's a good girl, fine girl. My son was lucky. What? What should we say, Mom? Say, Benjamin? You have said it without saying it. My two big 
policeman. You have said it. Bye, Mom. Matthew. Mom. Benjamin. Oh. What is it, Mom? The little ruffian, little Jeff, running this way down the block. I'll have to hurry and get him a few cookies so he can eat them while he watches hop along Cassidy. Uh, Mom. Yes, Matthew. God bless you. I didn't want to call you over at Mom. Hey, what's the matter? I just brought a guy in, a 211, shooting. Francis Black. Oh, uh-huh. dead? Very. Four slugs in him. I was just going to get that old bum from the identification. He's down with Sergeant Quine. Yeah. Yeah, let's go get him. Where did they find the body? 45th and 108th Street. Witness say he came out of a hotel and somebody opened up across the street with rifles. Uh-huh. Man who runs a jewelry store caught a wild shot in the hip. How was Mom? Oh, magnificent. Yeah. I feel terrible. I want to get those guys, Bill. Quine. Matt? Yeah. Bring Charlie here. Huh? He found something. Charlie found something. He spotted one of them? Uh, I found one, Lieutenant. I found one. You sure? Well, he says this is one of them. I just take it. I'm just going to call you. Uh, that's one of them, all right. That's one of the fellas that pushed that guy off the bridge. Here's his package. Uh-huh. You know him, Bill? Yeah. Joseph Bolger. Mm-hmm. FBI kickback here. We've had Bolger before. You sure this is one of them? Yeah, I've seen him clear. Him and two others. Charlie. Yeah, Lieutenant? No mistake? No, sir, I mean it, Lieutenant. That fellow right there is one of the men. I'll put out a picker. We'll be in the morgue. Come on, Charlie. We got another one for you. Another one? Down in the morgue. He was mixed up in it. Might have been one of the three who pushed Fisher off the bridge. You just got in, George. 211 shooting. Uh, Francis Black? Yeah, that's right. Right here. Uh, come here, Charlie. Stand right there. Okay. That's it. Pull it back, George. Sure. Well, no one? I. Well, yes or no? I, I think so. You do? It's, it's hard to tell with him lying down. Sit him up. Oh, I would look it's at All right. Me. Sit him up, George. Sure. Well, Charlie? That's one of them. Sure? Yeah, I'm sure, Lieutenant. I've got a dragnet out on Joseph Bolger. Well, if Charlie's identifications are right, we've tagged two of them, Bill. Pretty easy to figure why Francis Black was killed. Guys with those rifles didn't like him getting mixed up with a cop. Knew we had him spotted. So they blasted him before we could pick him up. Yeah. You uh, said that Fisher made his contact with Francis Black in a bar. What bar? A place on 73rd Street, Angelo's. We've got a man watching it. Uh-huh. Well, what about the guy who runs it? No record. Name's Angelo Giuseppe. We talked with him, showed him Black's picture. Never saw him before. Didn't remember him coming in last night. Has he seen the mug on Joseph Bolger? Not yet. You want to take it over? Yeah. Long shot. But I don't want to sit around and wait. I don't blame you. Let me know if you get anything. I don't want to miss it. Nobody does. Everybody wants in on this one. There'll be four more amateur songwriters on hand, and one of them will sell his song for nationwide distribution when Songs for Sale comes along this Friday night on most of these same CBS stations. Songs for Sale gives these new writers a great chance. Their songs are judged by a panel of experts. Their music is sung by Rosemary Clooney and Richard Hayes. They're made to feel at home under the guidance of the experienced showman Jan Murray. For an hour of fascinating fun behind the scenes of Tin Pan Alley... Hear songs for sale this Friday and every Friday on CBS. Yeah. 
sure, Lieutenant. I talked with some of your boys this morning. They they showed me the picture of some guy named... Uh... Francis Black, Angelo? Uh, yeah, yeah. He was supposed to have been in my place last night. Supposed to have met that cop who got killed, but I, I never saw him. I see. Well, how about this guy? Oh, well, let me get my glasses. All right. Name's Joseph Bolger. Yeah. Let's see. Yeah, Joseph Bolger. Hey, Lieutenant. Yeah? This one, this one's been in my place many times. Uh, Joseph Bolger? Well, he don't call himself a Joseph Bolger. Al, I think. Al, uh, Al something. Uh, when was the last time he was in, Angelo? Oh, two, three days ago, I think. Comes in once or twice a week. Been coming in once, twice a week for about a year. Uh, once or twice a week. I see. Well, how well do you know him? Well, not too well. He don't say much, you see. I know he calls himself Al, uh, I don't know, something. Uh, never said where he lived? Well, never said nothing, no. I uh, I heard a couple of guys call him Al one time or another. Yeah. yeah. I always said, hello, Al, when he came in. It's a good policy. No, Yo. Your customers' names make them want to come back. Look, Angelo, you haven't seen him in two or three days? No, but he'll probably be in. I'm sure he lives around here. Oh, well, why are you sure? Well, a guy don't keep stopping into a bar once or twice a week for a year in the evenings if he don't live close by. You know, you, you go out of your way to a real classy joint, maybe, but not to my place. It's nice, it's comfortable. I don't water my drinks, but the class, <laughs> I ain't got. Angelo? Yeah. Yeah, Lieutenant. Now, this is Sergeant Greb, Angelo. Oh, hello, Sergeant. Hello, Angelo. Angelo, starting now, there'll be two officers in your place from the time you open in the morning till you close at night. Uh-huh. Sergeant Greb and I'll take over for today. Tomorrow will be probably two others. Uh, all right, Lieutenant. Now, look. If Joseph Bolger comes in, try to act like there's nothing wrong, understand? Yeah, but get out of the way. Go to the back room or something. And we'll try to take him without any shooting. Yeah, yeah. And now we'll sit over at that table. Bring us a beer or something. Okay. Glad I paid my insurance last month. <sighs> you think Bolger will show? I hope so, man. The captain's got a bunch of boys out with pictures covering this area for about three miles each way. Mm, that's a lot of walking. Yeah, yeah. Here's a beer. Oh, thanks. Now, just forget about us, Angelo. Well, that ain't easy. I'm going to try to act like it. Well, that I can do. What's the time? It's 3.40. Cop spends half his time waiting. Boys. Uh, yeah. Well, there'll be two more tomorrow morning. Sure, sure. Good night, Angelo. Good night, good night. Yeah, I hate to do that every day. Yeah. Yeah, I can't think of anything more terrible than sitting all day and half the night watching a perfectly good beer go flat. Three days now, Bill. Yeah. Quite an asher in the bar today. Yeah, Matt and I go tomorrow again. Wish we'd get something. Well, take it easy. Take it easy. How close can you get? Got one, identify the other. My boys have showed Bolger's picture to everybody in that area. Nobody knows him. Nobody's seen him. Yeah, yeah, I know. Too bad more of us couldn't have been to Fisher's funeral. I'm sure Mom understood. Ben, we've run in every narcotic suspect we can get our hands on. We've sweated stoolies. Three days now, we've questioned every hood in the city. We've got all the roads covered. Airports, bus stations. Where is Bolton? I wish I knew. I'll see you later. i got to go down to the line. Okay. Uh... Ben! Yeah? Get Matt. Just got a call. Bolger's in the bar now. <laughs> Klein 
not to take him until we got here. How do we do it? Well, the more of us, the less chance of Bulge is using his gun. Uh, Matt, uh, cover the alley. Right. All right. Let's go, Bill. Now, let me go in first. I'll get next to him. Let's see. Uh, give me about uh, 30 seconds. Okay. Oh, hello, hello. A beer, please. Coming up. There. there you are. Thanks. How you been? Oh, fine, fine. Oh, my gosh. Mm, what's wrong? I forgot to call my wife. She'll kill me. Don't move, Bolger. Hmm? He said don't move. Look out. You. Fine. Asher, go. Let me go. Get him out in the alley. Now. I got his gun. Move the door there. Get out there. Hey, what is this? Hey, now, wait a minute. We want the other guy. What other guy? What are you talking about? You know what we're talking about, you lousy cop killer. No. You're going to tell us where he is. No, 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 no. wait. Bolger, you got ten seconds to make up your mind. Be. Uh, better make it a Thompson and a shotgun. One Thompson, one shotgun. Uh, here's the Thompson. Okay. Who oh, gets the shotgun? I'll take it. Okay. How much ammunition? Uh, two drums for the Thompson, six rounds for the shotgun. Here, sign off. Okay. Uh, what's the number on the Thompson? Then? Uh, six, seven, six... One, two. Six, seven, six, one, two, one, Thompson. A shotgun? Uh, six, four, five, one, two, eight. Six, four, five, one, two, eight? Yeah. Uh, six, four, five, one, two, eight. Two drums for the Thompson, six rounds for the shotgun. Okay. I sure been hopping the last half hour. Everybody's been down here. We've got a lead on the third guy who killed Fisher. Yeah, I heard. Some guy named Shaw. Yeah. Well, this is one time I don't mind being busy. Closed off. Two men at the alley entrance. Cars at the end of the blocks. Three cars on the street here. Uh-huh. Where's Shaw? We talked with the hotel clerk. Says Shaw hasn't come in yet. Usually comes in between seven or eight. Fine, sitting in the lobby. Mm-hmm. Do we wait in his room, Captain? Yeah. It's nearly seven now. Shaw's room is 208. Clerk. Uh, yes, sir. Give us the key to 208. Yes, sir. There you are. Fine. Yes, sir. We're going up to the room. If Shaw comes in, just get behind him. Follow him up. Right, Captain. Take the elevator. Mm -hmm. Two? Yeah. Office called. Bolger signed a full confession. Bolger and Black were pushing the stuff for Shaw. Mm -hmm. Uh, 215. 214. Down this way. Shaw and Bolger met... Black and Fisher on the ferry. Shaw recognized Fisher as a cop. Drove the bridge. Killed him. Yeah. Oh, here. 208. Bolger still says Shaw pulled the trigger? Yeah. Hey, hey. Come on, let's go. Take the stairs, Matt. Captain, Shaw came in and shot that officer. Yeah. Quiet. Quiet. He went, went down. He saw me start after me. Started shooting these down in the basement. Stairs right over there. Get an ambulance. Have to warn the men in the well, street. Go and tell them and get an ambulance. Come on, Matt. Yeah. Uh, you clerk, stay with this man. Yes, sir. Down here, Matt. You want some light? No. I go around that way. Right. You must have gone through that door. No, 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 huh? Matt. Look, service elevator. He's going up. Yeah. 
The roof. Come on, let's go. He can't get off. He's ten stories up. Two boys coming up the fire escape. He's probably waiting for us to come through this door. Now stay low. Go through one at a time. What about that Thompson? He'll throw slugs all over the city. I won't use it unless I have to. Keep the door open. I'll go first. Okay, Matt. Go. Right. I got him pinned down. Let's go, Bill. He's behind that row of vents. Near that big air conditioning unit. Spread out. Look out, Captain. Sure. Give it up. They're all around you. He's coming around your way now, Matt. Stay where you are, Bill. Just a minute. All right. I'll go around this way. He's coming back. He's circling. Watch it, Ben. Sure. Ben. Okay, boy. You get him, Ben? Yeah. Let's get him off the roof. Get out of this wind. I should have worn a heavier coat. Yeah. Yeah, a guy could catch a bad cold up here. Lineup, where before you pass the innocent, the vagrant, the thief, the murderer. Listen again next week when we again bring you the lineup. May I have your attention, please? You people out there on the other side of the wire in the audience room. May I have your attention, please? Thank you. My name is Greb, Sergeant Nat Greb. I'll explain the lineup to you. Each of the suspects you will see will be numbered. I'll call off a number, their name and charge. If you have any questions or identifications, please remember the number assigned to the prisoner as I call his name. At the end of... The lineup starring William Johnstone as Lieutenant Ben Guthrie and Wally Mayer as Sergeant Matt Grebb was written by Blake Edwards with music by Eddie Dunstetter. Featured in tonight's cast were Junius Matthews, Stacey Harris, Larry Dobkin, Jay Novello, Lou Krugman, Jack Moyles, Ida Reese Marin, Ed Begley, and Virginia Gregg. The lineup is produced and directed by Jaime Del Valle. Every Friday night, Broadway's My Beat brings you the latest adventure of Danny Clover, the handsome young plainclothesman who patrols the Great White Way. Wealthy playboys and panhandlers, Appalannies and chorus girls, flashy big shots and shoeshine boys. They're Danny's friends, and when a crime is committed, their inside stories help Danny to find the thief or killer. Friday night also brings you the CBS famous anti-crime series, Up for Parole, the hard-hitting factual stories of men and women behind bars who seek another chance at freedom. You're sure to enjoy both Broadway's My Beat and Up for Parole. They're heard every Friday on most of these same CBS stations. This is CBS, the star's address, the Columbia Broadcasting System.